Hi there, today we're looking at Mastering Atari Go Chess and Shogi by Planning with a Learned Model by Julian Schrittweiser and people generally from DeepMind. Um, so this paper is an extension to AlphaZero, the kind of um, famous algorithm that learned to play Go and chess uh, simply by playing itself. And the kind of cool thing about this model is is that it has a learned environment model. So what does this mean? Usually, if you have a game such as chess, I believe there is a picture of chess down here. If you have a game such as chess, and you want to learn to play it, you need to know the kind of the rules of chess, right? So in chess, you have the rules like the pawn can move two or one, right? The bishop can move diagonally and so on. Similarly in uh, shogi or go here, you know where you can place the stones and when you win, everything is clearly defined. So what you can do is actually you can, you can plan, right? You can now think of, okay, if I do, if I do this opening, right? My opponent could do either this or this or, you know, this. And for each of the three moves, I, I'll have a response. So if, if they do, if they move this pawn, I'll go for a, like a, a gambit here. And if they move this pawn, then I can, you know, move on. Something like this, right? Um, so what in essence, what you have is a tree search. So you start out with the state you're currently in, right? And then your opponent, oh, sorry, this should be, you're the state you're currently in, your opponent has the option of performing any one of these moves, let's say there are three moves. And then from each of these three moves, you again have the option of performing any of these moves. And the cool, the good thing is in chess, you know, each exactly what they do, like if I move my pawn, then the new board configuration will be the pawn will no longer be here, but here, right? So you know exactly what's going to happen. You can calculate that you're a perfect simulator. Then other domains, you don't have that. For example, in Atari, all you have in Atari is this, this screen, right? Maybe you have a little um, little submarine here, right? You have some opponents, right? The opponent, I don't know, what are the, what do the opponents look like? Are they fish? I don't even know in this game, right? And you can, I think you can shoot? There's coins to select? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> in any case, and sometimes you need to go up and there is like a health bar. Um, so, but but in essence, you only have this 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 screen here, right? You don't have you don't have more. Uh, and if uh, if you press a button, you can you can you don't exactly know what's going to happen. You don't exactly know what the pixel space will look like as this shot moves forward, right? I guess you could know, but um, you can't you can't use that to plan because the the kind of space is too big, and your actions may be not not clearly um, predictable and when you win aren't clearly predictable and there may be randomness so all of this stuff usually what people do is here they do use a model free reinforcement learning we've had this discussion you know before so this would be model free and while chess here you'd go about model based now what mu zero does is it uses a model-based planning, but it learns the model. So it, it tries to construct a model for this here. It tries to say, ah, okay, if I have this screen A here, right, my thing is here, and I press the button right, then probably my submarine is going to be a bit more to the right. But it doesn't do this exactly. So this has been done before. And this is what's what's kind of known as learning an environment model, where you map current environment plus action to the next step in the environment, right? Um, and this usually doesn't work too well, because um, you're really trying to generate this entire pixel space here. What the cool thing about mu zero is it doesn't do that. 
it doesn't predict the next state what it does predict is a hidden state and let's let's draw the hidden state as a little cloud here it predicts a hidden state of the next state and from the hidden state it will predict things like the reward the policy the value um, and then it can use from that hidden state it'll predict the next hidden state you and from that it will again predict the reward so the base idea is you only predict you only predict what you absolutely need to obtain the values that are important for doing reinforcement learning you're not trying to predict the full environment you're simply trying to predict whatever is necessary and this here is a learned quantity whatever is necessary to predict what what your what your rl model is going to need so that's uh, that's the basic gist of it and we'll look at how they do it or how they describe what they're doing so basically the picture a here is how mu zero plans so imagine you have a configuration a current state this is an observation and this could be a chessboard this could also be a position in shogi but it could also be a screen in an atari game or a camera input of a self-driving car and so on and the first thing it does it encodes that observation using this h here this um i believe they call this a representation function you encode that to this hidden state now the hidden state this is appropriately sized the hidden state here um, is supposed to capture everything you need about the state to predict uh, the kind of RL quantities in the future right and you learn this function H which in this case of course is going to be a neural network in order to produce such a state now from this state you do two things first of all you have this function f here and they call this the i i don't i don't remember <laughs> but you have a function to predict the following two quantities you predict the value function at that state and the value function simply means if you are in this state here right and this is now not a true state but a hidden state but still if you're in this state in this hidden state that belongs to this observation um then in the future you're going to make this much reward on average right with your current policy that's the value function so the value function basically tells you how good it is to be in a given state right and then the policy this is a bit special the policy is predicting how you would act in this state now this is a bit a bit confusing or it was to me when i first learned it because we're going to see over here how Al mu zero decides on how to act namely it does this entire tree search thing up to a certain depth right and then it creates this histogram and from that it produces the action but in order to produce to do this tree search this is exactly this picture a this is the that tree search that is done and in order to do that you need these p-values because we'll go there in a second you need these p-values and they cannot themselves again do a tree search right that would be like infinite recursion so what you need is you need kind of uh, an estimate right like if I were and especially down down for it makes more sense if I were in that state how would I act right if I were to do a tree search like this so you simply build a neural network that tells you with one evaluation without having to do the entire tree search down from here um, how you would act this doesn't need to be a perfect approximation of how you would actually act but it needs to be good enough right so this simply tells you how you would act in that state and that's important because what we do next is we use this policy to generate this action and this is a simulated action this isn't the real action because the real action would go here to the next actual observation this is a simulated action saying if i'm in this hidden state right my policy approximately would be this thing and so 
I can sample from that and say my action in that state would be this action. And so now I have a hidden state and an action. And from that I can produce the next hidden state. Now, of course, if I were to apply the action up here to the observation, right, action one, I would get the next observation. And that is exactly how alpha zero works, right? You use your simulator, your perfect simulator to take the current observation, the current state uh, with a given action that your this policy gives you and you produce the next state, but we don't have a perfect simulator, right? And we don't want to learn a model that predicts the entire state. But what we want to do is we want to predict the following. If we were to take a one here, if right, we would get an observation. Can we predict the result when we would apply the function h to that, right, giving me s prime, right, this is observation prime. So this function h here, which is the function that maps from observation space to hidden space, if we were to apply this to the next hidden to the next observation, we would obtain some hidden state for that observation. Can we predict that thing? So we need a function that maps from the hidden state, given an action, right, to the next hidden state. And that's exactly what what happens down here, right? This function g here maps exactly this hidden state plus the action to the next hidden state. And also, um, also, at the same time, it will predict a reward, right? Because in each step, you might get a reward. So each transition here gives you a reward. And we're trying to uh, predict that as well. Not that important, um, especially for games like chess or shogi, where there's only win or lose at the very end. But they incorporate this here to also be able to play these Atari games and like a broader range of reinforcement learning games. But in essence, that's what it is, right? We're trying to predict the next hidden state. And now we can basically recursively apply this. So from here, I have an idea of what my policy might be in that state, right? My approximate policy, my kind of a uh, mini policy that only needs one evaluation, I can sample an action from that policy. And uh, if maybe it's action two here, and I can then predict the next hidden state that I would be in. Also, um, uh, the, the reward, right. And therefore, using this, I can do like a tree search. So I can simulate future trajectories, right. First, like all of these policies, I can sample from them. Right, I can sample from them gives giving me different actions. So that that'll lead me down the tree different routes. So I can simulate future trajectories in this tree. And at the end, I have a pretty good idea, I can do this up to a certain depth, right? Uh, I don't have to do it until the very end, but I can. And then I'll have a pretty good idea of how my immediate the immediate future looks, right? Um, which actions lead me to approximately which states and for each state, of course, especially for each bottom state here, I have an estimation of the value of that state. So basically, I can the easiest thing would simply be to whatever search, how many steps is this one? No, this is zero. Uh, one, two, three steps into the future. And for each of these states obtain the value v here, v here, v, 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 v. And then I simply pick the action up the action up here. Now I'm running out of colors, I simply pick the action up here that will lead me eventually to the highest value state. Uh, so that's, uh, we, of course, we've not incorporated opponent plays here and so on. But that's the basic idea. You can do this more sophisticated, this um, tree search. And this is a topic that we might cover in a video about alpha go or alpha zero. But in essence, um, you can do the same thing as alpha go or alpha zero, except if you're not working with the simulator, um, but you're working with a learned model on the hidden states of the true observations. So B is how you would actually act, right? So for each observation here, we'd say you'd run such a tree search. 
and uh, you kind of get a histogram over visited actions. And again, we'll skip over that here, but this, this is part of the Alpha Zero paper. And you decide on an action, and that will give you a reward and a next observation. And that's how you act. And then you train these things end to end. So you you train um, you train the networks such that, of course, the reward, you know what the rewards are, right? The reward prediction of G, you know what that should be, right? From given a trajectory and action sequence, you know what the individual rewards should be. So that's, you can train G for that, first of all. You can also train to um, predict the correct value functions. Like in classic reinforcement learning, you can do like an end step uh, into the future prediction, or you can play until the end sample trajectories and so on. And the policy, you predict, you, you predict the policy, your approximate policy to, to match your true actions, right? Because your true actions you've generated by doing this entire tree search thing, which is, you know, the, your, what you're actually going to do. So you're training your approximate policy predictor that you use to run the tree search uh, to match as close as possible to your actual actions, right? This in this fashion. So this policy resulting from hidden state zero should be as close as possible to the action you actually took in the observation that led to hidden state zero. Yeah, so this is how you search, search, act and train using mu zero. And this is pretty, this is it, right? This is, the rest is, <laughs> as experiments the rest is um simply showing that they can handle these games they can keep the performance basically of the simulator based alpha zero in uh in games sorry where are the results here yeah so in these games in these left hand games they can keep the performance of alpha zero even exceeded here in go um and remember, they don't have a simulator like Alpha Zero. They have to learn this uh, model. And in Atari, they actually uh, outcompete the current state of the art, which is, I think, R2D2 or Impala. I don't know, but it's it's some model, I guess, some model-free um, RL baseline here on the on Atari. So that's pretty cool, and I think that brings. RL to kind of a new level um, with this hidden learning and uh, yeah they so they compare it against against multiple ones oh the R2D2 is a different thing all right um, yeah so that's that's that uh, for me it's a cool paper it's short um, read it if you if you want uh, I, I invite you to also look at the additional experiments where they basically ablate what they need. Is the learned model really as good or better as the real simulator? Does it take as much time? Actually takes less time which for, for higher ELO, which is pretty cool. How many simulations are needed? Uh, things like this. All right, that was it. Uh, I like this paper. Check it out. Bye-bye.